Hi everyone. I wanted to spend today looking at how to build a retention analysis for a SaaS business. And it's actually easier than it looks as with most of this stuff. So let me review a template that I've laid out here um, so that you can understand how best to build a, a retention analysis and how to approach it. So here, let's just start with customers. Um, you start with beginning customers. How many new customers did you add in the period? How many old customers that had churned reactivated during the period? Then how many churned customers or how many customers did you lose in that period? And so if you start with, let's say, 10, and in this Excel spreadsheet, what we do here is obviously the beginning of period customers is equal to the end of period for the previous period. So January finished with 10 and February starts with 10. And in this particular period, we added one, we reactivated zero, and we lost one. So we ended up staying constant at 10. So we just sum that up. Beginning customers plus new customers plus reactivated customers minus the churned customers equals your ending customers. And that just carries across. So every time the beginning of period is just the previous period, end of period. So over this spreadsheet, you can see that, you know, at the first few months, it stays relatively constant and then starts to grow. As you add more per month than you're losing per month, the number of um, ending customers continues to grow. So let's see what that means for a logo retention rate. Well, the logo retention is actually pretty easy. It's basically the one plus the new, sorry, one plus the reactivated customers minus the churned customers divided by the beginning of period. So basically, you ignore new customers because they're not retained, they're new customers, so they're new for the period. So you look at the beginning customers and you compare how many of you lost in that period and how many of you added. So you can see here it's a 90% retention rate because we lost one customer of the 10. And so that calculation carries on throughout to just kind of show what that monthly logo retention rate is. As part of this spreadsheet, we also look at MRR and that allows you to do calculations around gross revenue retention and net revenue retention. And so let's get into that a little bit more detailed here. So we've put here the average MRR per customer. And basically, that is just a calculation of the ending MRR divided by the ending customers. Now, you could get really like sophisticated here and start dividing by average customers from the two months and that sort of stuff. But given that you're tracking it on just a monthly basis, this is a very good way to kind of track things without overcomplicating things. And so you can see here that calculation is basically just looks at that ending MRR divided by the ending customers, and that gives you your average MRR per customer for the period. And so let's start with looking at how the MRR is calculated for the month. So again, similar to, to the customers that we looked at earlier, the beginning of period MRR is the same as the ending period, ending of the previous period. Then we look at how much new MRR have you added? How much upsell MRR have you added? So this is selling more seats to existing customers or selling more software to existing customers. How much has been reactivated in terms of MRR in that period? How much MRR did you lose from the churned MRR? And how much MRR did you lose from people downgrading? So Obviously, that's the opposite to upsell MRR in that if a customer is spending $100 with you but halves that to $50, then the downgrade MRR is 50 So what does that all mean when you add it up? Well, this is the calculation here. So basically, it's just a simple sum of beginning of MRR plus new MRR plus upsell MRR plus reactivation MRR minus the churned MRR, which is just expressed as a negative here, and the downgrade MRR, which again is expressed as a negative. And so that gives you your ending period MRR. You can just see that same sum going all the way across. So then how do we calculate things like ARR, 
the growth month over month and the gross retention, net retention. Well, let's get to that. And it's actually relatively straightforward. So ARR is as simple as multiplying N in MRR times 12. So you can see that it's very simple. And you can see that growth, you know, small differences because you're multiplying by 12 make a big difference to your ARR. So in this case, we're growing quite significantly month over month. And you can see that here. The next step is just to calculate, well, what is my month over month growth? So comparing February to, April, uh, to January, sorry. And if you do that, it's basically just February divided by January minus one. So in that particular period, we grew at 21.5% month over month growth rate. And you'll hear this quoted a lot by entrepreneurs when they're pitching VCs or whatever it might be. ARR growth is, is month over month is often quoted as is year over year. So year over year would pretty much be basically be this February divided by last February minus one. And then let's get into how to calculate the gross monthly, uh, monthly gross retention rate as well. So here we take the reactivation MRR plus the churned MRR plus the downgrade MRR and divide it by the beginning of period MRR. And that's all, you can kind of see this here, one plus the downgrade MRR, the churned MRR, and the reactivation MRR divided by the beginning MRR. And that is just expressed in a percentage, obviously. Um, and so our gross retention rate for that month was 95.5%. And the difference here when you move from gross retention to net retention is basically just adding in that upsell MRR. So it's the same calculation as gross retention, but we add one plus the downgrade MRR, the uh, churned MRR, the reactivation MRR, but the difference between gross and net re revenue retention is basically that you're including the upsell. And we divide all of that by the beginning of period MRR. And that's how we come up with the monthly net retention rate. What is good metrics for both of these? Well, for gross retention, we definitely like to see north of 90%. That's a strong business. You're retaining nine out of 10 of your customers. And for monthly retention, definitely north of 100. But some like best in class companies are doing 120, 130, or even 140% in this. And that means basically that they're upselling more of their existing customers than are downgrading or down or churning completely. I hope this template helps. I would recommend for any entrepreneur of a software business or a SaaS business to build this out and really track this on a monthly basis. It doesn't take much to update. You know, you're already using a few different numbers in terms of on the MRR side, and you're using a few different numbers on the customer side. But this can really help you understand your business, you know, especially like, are we lose, you know, this logo retention, if it pops, you, like you, you lose a lot of customers for a particular period, why are we losing them? It helps you ask the questions that you should be asking that help you run your business better and continue to grow your SaaS business. I hope this helps. Please like and subscribe. And see you next time.